week, the call of the ocean is too strong. I've just heard the bluefin tuna have turned up 20 miles off Sydney. So I've grabbed my mate Jim. So Jim, you excited? Oh, I'm oh, no. And we've headed out in search of these jumbo-sized tuna. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah. We struggle to bring up one of these barrels. Breaking me back already, it's made five minutes. We do our bit for science by tagging a couple more tuna. I'm trying to get another tag in, I'm just trying to unhook him so it doesn't hurt him. Look at that. <laughs> Look at the size of that puppy guy. Woohoo! And I get to swim with the fish. It's like getting lost in this alien underwater world. Fishing is my life. It's in my DNA. From above the water and below the surface. It's who I am. Oh yeah! Join me as I travel the world in search of the most insane fishing experiences on the planet. Nowhere comes in, smashes my barra. Oh, yeah! You're in for it now, buddy. Oh, yeah! Look at the size of it. And the boat out, it's in the of the boat. I'm Al McGlushen, and this is Fishing with Boat. This week, we're going bluefin tuna fishing right out the front of Sydney Harbour. Southern bluefin tuna are found in the Indo-Pacific, so the Indian and the Pacific Ocean. Now, they're a really unique species because they migrate over hundreds of thousands of miles. When they're traveling, they use the currents, and this is the key to finding them. When we're looking for bluefin, we've got to see that current, and when we find the current doing the right thing, which in their case is that it's coming up from the south and peeling up into the northwest, you're going to have fish because it's pushing them in close to the shore. That's exactly what's happened now, and that's why we're going fishing. Now, I was out west doing a photo shoot in the, you know, in the outback. Next thing I hear, someone caught a bluefin off Sydney. This is the wrong time of year to catch them. There's only one thing to do. Get the gear and go straight to sea. Now, when you want to get a crew at a day's notice, it can be hard. You know what? There's one bloke, Jim Petty. I met Al this year on a fishing trip up to Wreck Reef, so I've known him for maybe six months. I've got to get him out of work for a day and get him out fishing. You know how easy that is? A phone call. He's there. That's committed. Mate, got the Telica. I'll catch on that. You can catch on on the spin gear and underwater. I'm jumping in with him. Thanks, mate. Let's go catch a fish. Now, Jim Penny's a quiet bloke. You know, but he's a very, very good fisherman. And you know what? He's never actually caught a bluefin. So that is something we need to fix. He rang me and he said, oh, this is a plan. We'll get out there, we'll troll them up, we'll cube them, we'll get them up the back of the boat, we'll throw them pilchards, we'll feed them, I'll get in, we'll film them. Now, to catch these fish, you've got to put in the hours. And that means you've got to have a bloody early start. You've got to get up pre-dawn, you've got to get everything ready and you've got to be running as soon as there's any light so that the sooner you can get your gear in the water and start trolling, the likely you are to catch a tuna. It's early morning, well, the sun's just starting to poke over the horizon there, so we're running down the Parramatta River in the middle of Sydney. It's amazing and it's very late in the season, but if the water's right, the fish will be there. So Jim, you excited? Oh, I'm oh, no. If we race out now, bail and work and go fishing, we've got a chance. So we've run out through the heads, but we've still got an hour's travelling just to reach the grounds. So we open up the throttle because the quicker we get there, the quicker we can find these fish before everyone else arrives. When you're chasing tuna, the technique is to troll them up which usually means hours and hours of trolling in the hope that you might come across them. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. When you get a bite, the first thing you do is throw pilchards out because it's like a feeding frenzy. You know, one of the tuna come up, he eats the lure, 
then all these mates go, look at all these pilchers coming down. It's like Christmas, you know, they all come up. Next thing, you have them all at the back of the boat. That's when I can get in the water. So that's the key role for me today, is to get the bluefin up, we'll get Jim hooked up, and then I can jump in. So the southern bluefin Juna, would you believe it, spawn in the top of the Indian Ocean, up off Christmas Island between Australia and Indonesia, right up there. So they travel up the west coast, and then after spawning, they migrate down the west coast. Some of them split and go across to South Africa, so they go straight across the Indian Ocean. The ones that turn and go around into South Australia and a straight Australian bite, and then they go down around Tasmania and up the east coast, and then they come up here. But if we can get them up to the boat, it's the most amazing thing you'll ever see, because you literally hand feed them. All I want to do is jump in. So we're about to put the lures in. You know what, there's a call on the radio. Someone else has already got the fish on the troll and they're cubing them up. So they're already up to the back of the boat. So you know what, you don't look a gift horse in the mouth without thinking it. So we're going straight to the base. We get there and we start cubing up straight away and it's just chaos. Then all of a sudden, boom, boom, you start seeing these fish and we're talking 60, 70, 80, 90 kilo bluefin. In fact, some of them could have been over 100 kilos swimming at the back of the boat. So I'm not even gonna fish. I'm gonna hold back, because we're gonna get Jim onto one of these, and we're gonna do it the best way. We're gonna put him on spin gear so it hurts him, because that's how you can't catch a bluefin too easy. And now I said, don't worry about the big rods, just chuck a trace on the Stella and hook up, so that's what I did. I put my first bait in the water. Yeah, I'm in and a massive tuna come up and grabbed it, yeah. screamed off with a line, and it just went down. I could really feel the power in it. Started to hurt my back straight away, my forearms blew up. Heavy? Oh yeah, it's breaking me back already, it's made five minutes. My arms are hurting and I can't uh, do anything because I've got no harness. So I just had to grin and bear it and uh, wind this pig fish in. And you can see Jim, yeah, he was hurting a bit there, but it didn't matter, he kept going. He kept working on that fish and eventually it comes up, and you know what? It's a solid, solid bluefin. This is the best way to ever open your account on bluefin. Once you hook these fish, you've really got to control the fight. You've got to keep his head up. So when you've got his head up, it keeps his motor, his tail, pushing him up towards the surface. So he's pushing towards you, you're pulling towards you. If you let him get that head down, you can't stop him. He's going to put that head down, he's going to use that big tail and his weight in the current lay on his side. You've got to break him early and just get him up to the boat. Otherwise, you can spend hours and hours fighting them. There's those tense yeah. moments at the boat. You've got it up. You've got to, you know, get the gaff in right, and then still got to get the me. damn fish through the door. You are. Look at that for a fish. Woo -hoo -hoo! That's what you want, mate. No, yeah, that's my first one. No way. How's that for a first fish? You've never caught that fish till right. it's in the boat. Lift him up through the door. Lift him in. Oh, he's a good one, that one. Well, the first feeling was, thank God it's in the boat because my back's killing me. And the second feeling was, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just caught this fish. It's absolutely enormous. From when we stopped at the ground to having that fish lay on the deck, would have been lucky to be half an hour. It's just unreal. How is that for a fish? You literally get here and it's just alive with these beautiful big tuna. A lot of states say you can have two. But for me, do you know what? They're big fish. You only need one per person. So we had to get him cold because we're going to kill such a big fish like that. We don't want to waste any of it. You've got to process the tuna as soon as you catch it because their bodies heat up during the fight. And if you don't bleed them and put them on ice straight away, the meat will be ruined. And that is a terrible waste. That's your first one, isn't it? Sure is. Oh, man. It's not, hopefully not the last. No rest for the wicket. After Jim had cleaned up his first fish, we got him straight back on the rod. Get a wind on him when I can. Yeah. You got a bite on that one. You're into the braid already, mate. Coming up, it's my turn to dance the bluefin tango. Look at that. What a beautiful fish. Ha, ha, ha. Look at the size of that puppy guy.
<laughs> you got a bite on that one. You're into the braid already, mate. How good is this? It's quietening down. And then what do you get? A scream and run. Get a wind on him when I can. You right there? Yes. Get this line down for you. Oh, fucker. I fooled him. Sorry, mate. Oh, the last yeah, one on that way. Pulled, pulled him. Oh, come on. Man, he took some a big. <laughs> that was a better one, eh? Yeah, that was a good one. The next thing you know, the bluefin have started to sound, which means they go down deep, because there's boats coming from everywhere. You know, it's a calm day. Everyone's heard the bluefin are on. We've got bluefin fever. Look how many boats are out here. Is there anyone at work in Sydney? <laughs> the whole of Sydney. Is anyone actually at work, I ask you? What happens is, too many boats, they tend to quieten down. So the best thing to do then is to go and find your own fish. So we got the lures sorted, we got around, snuck away from all the other boats, and started heading east to try and find our own patch of fish. Again, we've gone back to finding that needle in the haystack. I think we got out to about five or six miles away from the pack, and all of a sudden, the short corner, which is the lure up close to the boat, goes, ah, starts going off, the little Halco Max. I got a little stripey. Do you want me to cube? Talk about a rod hog, you know. Where's my chance? He's caught a bluefin. I haven't caught one. So I go to clear the rods. I'm a little bit like, you know, I'm like, where's my turn? So I'm winding up. I get up next to the boat. There's this tiny little, tiny little striped tuna on it. It is a striped tuna because he shakes it off the side of the boat before anyone can see it. Doesn't want anyone to know that he's got a striped tuna on. Ah, uh, pulled mine. Mine through the hook. No, no, yeah, I went to pull him and he fell off. And as luck would have it, the rod next to me goes off and this one's screaming, now it's McGlashan's time. This is the time, because you know what? His fish is coming in. Mine, it's screaming off. Mine's a blue fin. Yeah. Now, Jim didn't need a harness for his little striped tuna. That was cool. But you know what? I'm calling for the harness straight away. Swing around to this side. And with that harness on, this fish is coming in. What a beautiful fish. Still fighting, of course hooked up, stayed down deep. By now, we're throwing pilchards over. We turn around, look at the fish find at the Furuno. It's lit up like a Christmas tree. There are stacks of big bluefin under us. This <laughs> is going to happen. So I'm still fighting my fish. So it went under the engine probably five or six times, you know? And because the rods are only short with those short strokers, it's hard to get around. You're harnessed up, so you're not very manoeuvrable. But finally, we got it up. Of course, it went around the wrong side of the boat. Then I brought it right back around the other side of the boat. You ride on that side, I'll bring it around to you. Look at that, what a beautiful fish. They're the most tagged fish now for bluefin. They went from a species that were almost literally endangered to where the population's coming back. This is a nice fish, but you know what? We've got one on board. Might take one later on, but let's put a tag in a couple. We're gonna put a fisheries tag in it so we can learn where they go and what they do. With tag and release, it's really good. We give the information back to the fisheries New South Wales and they can work out what the fish are doing, where they're spawning, and protect their grounds. And that's a role that recreational anglers play in conservation and helping science. So when you get the tag in, you've got to get the tag in the right spot, up towards the dorsal fin. That will secure it and make it also more obvious if someone else ever recaptures that fish. But tagging a fish, unhooking a fish all in one, that's not easy. I'm trying to, we've got the tag in, I'm just trying to, Unhook him so it doesn't hurt him. Look at that. <laughs> Look at the size of that puppy go. Woohoo! After my fish was released, we had to find the school again. So it was back on the hunt. Big bluefin, they have no fear of us at all. So if I jump in the water, initially they're probably a bit more like, what is that fat, ugly walrus sea cucumber thing doing? And then within a few minutes, they'll just be cruising around you and just sitting there going, oh yeah, whatever. So hopefully we can see it today and they'll just swim around. You can, you can literally hand feed them. And what's amazing is that they swim right up to you. Like, they never touch you, but they'll swim right up to you. And you can see when they swim past, they're like, oh. And I'd prefer to do that than to catch a fish, to jump in with them. So when it comes to jumping in with these fish, it's a little bit daunting, you know, it's a kilometre deep water. There's lots of sharks, lots of big fish out there. A few things that want to eat you, but the 
chance of jumping in with his tuna, especially when they just swim around the boat like that. It's just too big. Coming up, it's time for me to take the plunge and explore the underwater galaxy of bluefin tuna. Awesome seeing these fish, you know, seeing these huge barrels just boiling and surging around the boat. You know what's even better? To jump in with them. So Jim's gonna feed them, I'm gonna swim with them. And now slides over the side. So I've got my gear on, I've got my fins, I've got my underwater housing, and I've just slipped into the water. And it's like entering another world. Instantly these huge bluefin, they know you're there straight away, but they don't swim away. They just cruise up, have a look at you, as soon as he slides in, up comes this great big tuna, swims straight past him, it's unreal. Bluefin tuna are partially warm-blooded, which means they can tolerate a wide range of temperatures and that makes them better predators. This is what I live for, you know, it is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, especially with really big ones like this. Here we are, we've got the tuna, graceful things, swimming up beside the boat, beautiful, crystal clear water, you can see everything they're doing. And they'll look down the side, and here's Bloody McGlashan splashing around, carrying on. It's awesome because they, they just come up, they're eating the cubes, swim around with you, and I'm filming them like this, it's just, you can't explain how amazing it is to jump in with fish that are almost as fat as you are, and they're just cruising around. And it's amazing, there's no fear. They're absolutely fearless. They don't see you as a threat. They'll come right up, you know? There are times there where they come straight past that I can reach out and touch them, and they seem totally unfazed by the whole thing. You know, they cruise up and you watch this pecking order, that one will be slightly bigger than the other. As one's going up to get the pilchard, the other one will slide in. I'm just throwing pilchards in front of him. He's filming them coming up and eating it. It's, um, I've never seen nothing like it. He's just flopping around on the surface and all these big tuna are coming up underneath him and across the front of him. Well, it was a funny sight to see. All the fish looking at him thinking, what is this thing? And I think I end up being in there. It was probably an hour I'm in the water with them. My sand disc cards had all run up. I'd chewed up all my memory. Everything had been used up and I'm freezing cold. Eventually I've got to get back in the boat. You know what? I don't want to get in the boat, but I've got to get back in the boat because I reckon we might give Jim another chance of catching one and we might even give him the harness this time. All right. Uh, what time right. for one more? One more for you. So back in the boat, I've dried off. It's time to catch Jim another bluefin, I reckon. Yeah, you're tired now. <laughs> oh, you reckon you are? This is the second one on the spin. So we're going to upgrade his PB, and you know what? There's some fish in the 90s, maybe even the 100 kilo mark swimming around. This time, we're going to make him earn his fish even more. So instead of using spin gear, we're going to use the oh. heavy attack. We're going to put the talika down. This way, at least he could use a harness. Straight out. Start feeding it down. Bang. The rigger goes off on the other side and starts peeling line. I knew that was a big fish. Come in. Come on, come on. Oh, I think it's the real one, mate. He's going. Oh. He's going. Coming up, Jim goes for round two with a jumbo bluefin tuna.
think he's the real one, mate. He's going. Oh. He's going. Bang, he's on. Real screaming. No question it's a better fish. Fish just tears off. It's even bigger than my first one. It's unreal. So I go to all the effort. We're going to give him a harness. We're going to give him a gimbal. We're going to put him on the Talika. We're going to do everything the right way to make his job easier. What's Jim do? He just goes and picks up the stiller again, the spin gear. It hurt him last time. It's going to hurt a whole lot more because these fish are bigger. At one point, uh, I thought the fish was going to break me. My back was hurting and he was just laying on his side and uh, he wasn't moving for a while. He's hurting, I reckon. You know, you can see the pain. But it doesn't matter. He's just going straight into it, working hard on this fish. But he's now a pro. Now that he's got one under his belt, he knew what he was doing. But I think I'd learn a bit of something on the first one because I, I broke him really quick, turned his head. We got him up to the surface. You know what, when you're fighting a fish on spin gear, especially a big tuna, it hurts your lower back. And you can see Jim, yeah, he was hurting a bit there, but it didn't matter, he kept going. He kept working on that fish, and eventually it comes up, and you know what, it's a solid, solid bluefin. It is a proper fish. This is over 1.7 metres long. So to give you an idea, at 1.85 metres, that's around 100 kilos. And this is 1.75, it's not quite 100 kilos, but I tell you what, it's really, really close. How many kilos do you reckon? 60 plus. That size, how far have you got? You About up? 10 metres. All right, so still got, do you want to tag it or we take one more? Up to you, mate. Yeah, let's tag it. You know, he's got this fish up. We've just caught our fish and we don't want to keep any more fish and my body's pretty sore. Got it right here. Got him? Yep. Oh, you are going to take off. I got you. Got him. To roll over. Come here, buddy. Where do you want it? This way, on the shoulder. Hang on. Come around, buddy. Come on. Okay, again. Yep. All right. You want me to unhook him? Yep. He's pretty deep. Yep, boys. Oh, yeah. bloody gold, mate. Well done. How good's that? So, what do you do now? You take the hooks off and you start throwing poppers at them. Now this is fun. That's just one of Shimano's stick baits, no hooks on it. Chuck her out like that. Totally wrong gear for this. Oh! <laughs> Throwing poppers about without any hooks in them means we just get to watch the strikes without the hassles of winding them in. Oh, maybe not. Oh! And what a great way to finish the day. There's nothing better than fishing with your mates than catching big tuna. And you know what? You catch some, you let some go. But the best part with bluefin is you get to go home knowing you've got some awesome sashimi on the menu. Just check out the spoils of the day. Now, this is what fishing with mates is all about. Oh, how good is that? Oh, thanks, mate. Oh, that's how unreal. How good is it? Oh, my God, that's good. <laughs> all right, now clean the boat. I'll go and look after this. A bad day fishing beats a good day at work any time, and today was an unbelievable day of fishing. It was one of those days that you could not have asked for anything more. <laughs> oh, this is going to hurt. <laughs> <laughs>